Okay, okay, before we go balls deep into this video, I'd like to make two things explicitly clear. Firstly, this video isn't to hate Kristen Dunst. Or Dunst. I'm not really sure. As an actress, no hate to her. I don't even know any of her other work besides the Spider-Man trilogy. Now secondly, I'm not hating on women, okay? I'm not sexist. I mean, does punching women when they speak without my permission make me sexist, huh? Then alpha now. Stay tuned. No, wait, no, officer, no, I was joking. No, this video is specifically about the fictional character MJ, who is a massive whore. Now, let me elaborate. So, in the first Spider-Man film, she has this dingus of a boyfriend named Flash, all while she constantly leads Peter on. She knows he likes her, it's so obvious a goddamn five-year-old can read the sexual tension in the room, yet she continues to hopelessly lead him on. So, she won't date him, but she'll give him the let's make babies eyes. Just leave the man be in peace. MJ, however, chooses the opposite of peace and starts dating Harry, Peter's best friend. Now here, I can't solely blame MJ because Harry knows better than anyone how much Peter likes MJ and still chooses to date her. And his excuse is pathetic. You should know I'm crazy about her. It's just, you know, you never made a move. What about the bro code, Harry? You don't make moves on the girl your best friend is crushing on. So I'll split the blame 60-40, Harry taking more blame, obviously, because he's a little bitch. Now, it hasn't gotten to its worst yet, because MJ being as loose as my shalwar. A shalwar is a cultural type of dress worn by uh, Pakistani and Indian men. Uh, now that you understand the joke, you can laugh. Anyway, she kisses Spider-Man while she's dating Harry. Yes, this scene is iconic, and yes, I was looking at her nipples the whole time, and yes, this scene gives me a boner that could tear through my pants, but... That's technically cheating, so I hereby sentence her to the streets. Later in the film, she breaks up with Harry because he's a spineless twat who can't stand up for his girlfriend, and then immediately starts flirting with Peter a few scenes later. So she is now well on her way to having the street named after her. And at the end of the movie, she kisses Peter again at her ex-boyfriend's father's funeral. I mean, this woman has no propensity for remorse whatsoever. That is truly disrespectful, man. Then we come to Spider-Man 2. Things start off nicely for MJ. She lands a play. We see her at Peter's birthday party. Everything's all right, and she's flirting with him again. This isn't even flirting, man. This is toying with a man's heart on a carnal psychological level, man. Peter looks like he's about to fucking cry. And she does this while she's dating this guacamole. MJ has feelings for Peter throughout the entire movie, but she's dating this other guy, a despicable thing to be doing, by the way, which discourages Peter from approaching her. And he's also weighed down by the responsibilities of being Spider-Man, trying to balance his life out with all that stress, eventually gets so tiresome that he begins to lose his powers. What I'm saying is the man's got issues. To add insult to injury, MJ gets engaged to the Bozzolini. Now I would have been happy if the MJ Peter arc ended there and Peter started chasing another girl. But this hoe won't leave my boy be. Because later on in the cafe scene, MJ asks Peter to kiss her whilst there's an engagement ring on her finger. You see this? Disgusting. Ugh. Anyhow, the movie ends with MJ running out on her wedding to date Peter. I mean, it's like she calculates the most complicated way to date someone by hurting as many guys as possible and then does it. Then we come to Spider-Man 3. Now, despite being a poorly paced film that was packed to the tits with new characters and poor development, one thing that remained consistent was MJ's polygamous nature and her need to punch Peter Parker's heart right in the dick. I'm not going into detail, I'm just gonna explain the highlights. So MJ starts off jealous of Peter. Her acting career isn't going so well, but Peter is living his best life. She's looking for reasons to hate him, which is when Peter kisses Gwen on stage for the sake of entertainment. Naturally, MJ gets mad, which is ironic considering how she's an NYC landmark at this point. After that, Peter tries to propose to MJ at a restaurant, but Gwen shows up and says hello to Pete because they're in the same class. MJ doesn't like it and accuses Peter of cheating. After messing with Peter's head, she goes back to Harry's place to hang out and ends the afternoon by giving him a nice, private, French-Italian margarita chupacabra. Anyhow, the movie ends with MJ getting kidnapped so she can get rescued again, and they use this trope a lot in the Spider-Man films. In the first one, she got kidnapped by Goblin, in the second one, she got kidnapped by Doc Ock, and finally, in the third one, she got kidnapped again. Hey... <laughs> 
<laughs> I just realized that if you put dog og together, it spells out the cock. <laughs> nice. Sorry. Sorry, my apologies. Now, despite being as repetitive as it is, I don't really mind. The Tobey Maguire trilogy is near and dear to my heart, as it is for many other people that grew up watching them as kids. And although I am older now and smarter and sexier, nostalgia won't really allow us to view these films objectively. And that's okay. Nothing is ever perfect, notably when it comes to superhero films. But I love Spider-Man. No homo, by the way. So it doesn't matter that MJ is a colossal slut who treats her lips like an iPhone charger. In my humble, educated, and superior opinion, the Tobey Maguire trilogy is the best. Not because it is, but because I want it to be. Also, I haven't seen No Way Home, so please, no spoilers in the comments or I'll break your fucking neck.